Because today it seems like worldly Christians or so-called Christians, they don't know what is acceptable. They have no clue what is acceptable. As a Christian, we should know what is right, what is righteous according to the Word of God. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. This past week I've had two different camps, one the Ruckmanites, the other the Calvinists, make some false accusations toward the teachings that we've taught here. And in 1 Corinthians 6, we see a warning, and people will often say, well, well a homo can be saved. Well, now wait a minute, Romans 1 says they are reprobate, they are rejected of God, there's no turning them around, their mind is defiled, they want to hurt people. Amen. And people will point to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and try to say, well, that says that homos can be saved. But that's not what it says. Now, other people will point and say, oh, you're saying that Jesus' blood is not strong enough? Are you saying that Jesus can't save some people? Listen, Jesus died for every sin for every person in the entire world. I don't care how small, how big, He died for every sin. But it's the responsibility of the individual to make a choice. That choice is whether you will be a son of God or a son of the devil. And when someone chooses to become a son of the devil, that's their choice. There's no turning back. There's no going back. You can't fix a wicked, evil heart. You can't fix asking the devil into your heart. We're Christians. We are saved. Once saved, always saved. They're damned forever. In 1 Corinthians 6, people reference this in, 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 to try to debunk the reprobate doctrine that say that, so, that sodomites can be saved. They say that child molesters can be saved. That cannibals can be saved. The Bible is very clear on all of these points that those people do things that are so unnatural that it, it, it has not happened by accident. The Calvinists would say, well, we were all reprobates before we got saved. No, not true. No, th those things are unnatural, uh, things that we are not capable of as a normal person. Even an unsaved individual is not going to accidentally eat their neighbor or molest a child. It doesn't happen. That's somebody that becomes a child of the devil. Then they're capable of those weird things. You're in 1 Corinthians 6. Look at verse number 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And that's the phrase that they like to dial into. We'll see right there. Now, number one, this is a list of people, and it's talking about the actions in the flesh, Right? Just like in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it gives you a list of people that deserve to go to hell. Yeah. And guess what? Liars are included in that list. If you have broken God's law, the punishment is death in hell, the second death. That's what God said. Everybody deserves to go to hell by your own choice of sinning. Listen, little babies are innocent. They are, they are not saved, but they are safe under the grace of God. And if they die without even the comprehension of the gospel, they're going to go to heaven. That's biblical. Their angel doth always stand before the face of their father. David knew. He said, I, can, I cannot go to him, right? Or he said, he cannot come to me, but I will go to him. David's saying, he's not coming back down from heaven, but one day when I die, I'll be in heaven with that baby. Right? God preserves the innocent life. And when you get to a point where you can comprehend the gospel, you are responsible to make a choice for yourself. People that end up in this category of Romans 1 or Micah 3 or there's many, uh, 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 Jeremiah chapter 6, rejected of God, that was their choice. They chose to reject God just as Pharaoh hardened his heart. God said, okay, I'll harden your heart. You, wanna, you, want, you don't want a conscience? Okay, I'll take that conscience back. I will sear your conscience and now you're capable of all manner of perversion. Look at the next verse here, verse 10. He says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. He says, there were some of you that were drunks that are now saved and forgiven of that sin. You were adulterers and you've been forgiven of that sin. He says you might even been effeminate. And that sin was forgiven by Jesus Christ. He says you might have been an abuser of yourself with mankind. Now this is where the false 
camp, the, the Ruckmanites, the Calvinists, the Pentecostals, right? The more every other false religion wants to attach to this in their false Bible and say, see, that's talking about a sodomite. Well, funny, it doesn't say sodomite. Not in English or in Greek. So where are you coming up with that? But notice what it says. So, so abusers of themselves with mankind. Now this phrase is also used in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 10. It says, whoremongers and those that defile themselves with mankind. What is somebody that defiles themselves with mankind? It is a whoremonger. Take it in context. Look at verse 12 here. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. He said, now that you're saved, you're forgiven of everything, you can do things like that. But it's not good, it's not expedient. Look what he says. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. When you give yourself into sin, that sin has power over you. Yeah. Verse 13. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Gluttony is a sin that was paid for. You shouldn't continue doing it. Drunkenness is a sin. It goes into your belly. It's a sin that God has paid for, but you shouldn't still keep doing it. If you say, Brother Fanner, I'm a drunkard. It's you don't know it, but I'm a drunkard. I can't seem to give it up. I don't want to give it up, but I know that Jesus paid for my sin. You're still saved, but God will correct you in the flesh. He will not take the promise of your eternal salvation of your soul away, but He will correct your flesh. But fornication, he says, now the body is not for fornication. There's something different about fornication where it's like you're on a path of suicide. It's like the sin unto death where you begin to destroy your flesh. Look at verse 18. He says, flee fornication, for every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. You can be a drunkard. And there's not as much damage as if you're a fornicator. You understand there are people that say, well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I eat all organic, and I sleep with whoever I want. And God says, okay, you're destroying your body. You're going to have all manner of diseases. Look, and I'm not trying to justify any sin. I'm not saying, okay, you're better off smoking and drinking. No, no. God's warning us here, as Christians, 1 Corinthians is written to Christians, and it's saying, you used to do some pretty stupid stuff before you were saved. Now that you are saved, you have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit living inside of you, don't grieve that Holy Spirit. Don't reject God's law like the, the wicked do, to the point where God has to cause you to die a sin unto death, right? He's saying, I've given you the wisdom to preserve your flesh. You can have a good and healthy, happy life. And here he says, flee fornication. What is the person, as it says, such were some of you, what is an abuser of mankind? That's a fornicator. That is a whoremonger when you look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. But when, when somebody throws this verse at you, well, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, I always say, what about 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11? It's an identical list, and it's clearly dealing with church discipline. Let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 9. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of the world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you, not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. This is church discipline. He says, deliver such an one unto Satan. He says, kick them out of the church, so you're, you're getting the leaven out of the church. Don't let sin be openly in the church. We're supposed to do it right in here. Look, we're all still sinners, but there's certain sins. God says, if everybody, if this guy's a drunk and everybody knows it, if this guy's in fornication and everybody knows it, kick him out. We're here to teach the children the right thing. We're here also to make sure we keep our minds right and that we don't follow along with somebody that's in sin. Well, brother so-and-so, they're such a nice person. I know they're in open fornication. It's okay. No, it's not okay. God said kick them out of the church. And it begins chapter 6 by, by talking about that the saints will judge the world. And we need to judge in the church. And a drunkard, 
or a fornicator or somebody that's effeminate or a whoremonger that is an abuser of themselves with mankind is the type of Christian that needs to get out of the church until they're willing to get the sin out of their life so they can come back into the church and be restored. This same people, the people it's talking about in chapters 5 and 6, when you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, it talks, or 2 Corinthians, yeah, chapter 2, it talks about restoring that person, bringing them back in, forgiving and forgetting just as God does. This is a very important topic because what's it saying in Proverbs 10, 32? The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. And when somebody that claims to be a Christian comes to you and says, well, a reprobate can be saved. What? You say a rejected person, a, a person that God has rejected can be accepted? That's contrary. You're, you're saying a child of the devil can go to heaven? That doesn't make any sense. Show it to me in the Bible. Show me one child of Belial, one child of the devil, one child of that wicked one that got saved. It doesn't exist. Their soul their destination has already been determined by their own choice. God gave the gift of eternal life. He's given the gift of the conscience to a man. You're born neutral in the middle, and if you reject that, God will take that conscience back away from you, and you will do all manner of, of vile, wicked things. And when somebody that claims to be a Christian, that doesn't understand that the lips of the righteous know it's acceptable, they think it's acceptable to say, homos can be saved. Or they think it's acceptable to falsely accuse you. Oh, you're saying Jesus' blood isn't enough? No, Jesus' blood is enough. Are you saying homosexuality is a sin that's not paid for? No, that's not what I said. There are things that happen in prisons and abuse that happens, and God forgives all of those things. God has died for all of the sins of all of the world, and every single individual must make a choice for themselves. And when they reject God to become a child of the devil, that's a done deal. Just as much when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, your name was written in the book of life, it will not be blotted out. It will not be erased. It is in there forever. That's his promise. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. The mouth of the unsaved Christians are going to speak a bunch of perverse, froward things, falsely accusing the forgiveness of God, falsely accusing that children of the devil can go to heaven. Beware of it. Be warned of it because this is something they try to attack our church with. Hey, we believe everybody has an opportunity. And we believe once you make your choice, it's set in stone for eternity. 